connections. Um, connections between um, physics of the synchrotron and science and physics done in experiments uh, in synchrotrons in light sources. Uh, how we connect it, can bring it to, to the classroom, use it for the classroom. Um, so that's the aim for today's meeting. And it's, I think for me, at least it's not so about of us. Uh, I think we're trying to bring our point of view of, of four teachers, but on the second half, we'll split into two discussion groups. And um, I think what we want to, to hear from all of you teachers, thoughts, um, challenges, ideas, things that you would like to have. Um, I think also for this team, um, it could help us think about also future things, but we can also, um, as always, if you group more than two teachers together, it's it becoming a support group. So uh, yeah, the idea is also to be a support group for our uh, frustrations. Um, so we start with a, a, a presentation by, by uh, Masi and Alp. Um, and then we'd like to do like a short feedback. We'll use again the Padlet to, to brainstorm a bit about things coming up. <coughs> then we would like to share two videos of, um, of demonstrations that have connection to synchrotron physics. And on the second half, We'll split into two groups um, to discuss, I think, and, and you know, brainstorm and support each other's uh, frustrations. Um, so I, I hope that I haven't missed anything in our plan. And uh, so, okay, I got the thumbs up. So please, uh, uh, Masi Alp, um, the virtual zoom floor is yours great thank you uh so Masi, would you like to start first or shall i continue uh i you continue first oh okay so let me share the screen then Okay, so today we will be talking about physics curriculum in synchrotrons. So, oh, sorry. Wait, oh yes. So the goals of today's discussion will be uh, introducing, this, introducing the connections between the concepts discussed in previous sessions and to those presented in classroom. And also in the later part of this presentation, I will share a Padlet link uh, which you can write your ideas or any other connections which we haven't mentioned in the session or in the previous sessions. And uh, so later, uh, so after this presentation, we will actually see how such topics in, so we will discuss how such topics in physics curriculum can be connected to synchrotron and introduce possible ways that students might be involved in research. Okay, so these are the actually topics and which we have thought that synchrotron might be related to. So let's begin by magnetism. Now, as you know, magnetic field arises from the motion of electric charges. So a material which is capable of producing a magnetic field around itself is called a magnet. Now, as you know, magnets interact, interact with each other. They repel or attract each other. However, they do this without a contact. And so this is actually why magnetic force is called a non-contact force. And uh, so how do they apply force one another? Well, there is actually an agent, which is the magnetic field. So they apply this force through the magnetic field. And uh, as you know, if an atomic particle enters a magnetic field, then a force will be exerted on it. But the key here is that the particle has to be moving. So this is actually one of the common misconceptions which students carry them with them to the class. They believe that, and also a particle which is on, at rest might be affected by a magnetic field. 
so you can see the mathematical equation how to calculate uh, the force exerted on a moving particle inside a magnetic field. So how this is connect? So I know that you are, you actually see those concepts. You introduce these concepts into your classes, and now, sorry. Oh, okay, so I know that you introduce these concepts or most of these concepts in high in your high school curriculums. So let's see how this can be connected or how this is connected to synchrotron. So storage rings. Now in a synchrotron light source, an electric charge is accelerated through an electric field, and then it is injected into the into a storage ring where a magnetic field is present. Now as this particle moves inside this magnetic field, a force will be exerted on it. And in the storage ring, the particle will follow a circular path due to this force. And when the electric charge is accelerated radially, it will emit uh, a radiation, which is called synchrotron radiation. And the synchrotron light source aims to harness this radiation in order to gain knowledge in different fields such as health, agriculture, environment, and material sciences. So in the picture, you see uh, the location of the storage rings in Sesame. And uh, as you can see, the ones highlighted in red. So this is where uh, synchrotron and magnetism meets. So like as I said, there are other topics as well, other concepts as well. and my friend Massey will continue introducing them to you. Uh, so Massey, would you like me to stop sharing? You would like to share your own screen or shall we continue from here? We can continue to share and I explain it. Oh, so, okay. okay. I will continue That's to share. No okay. problem. That's okay. Okay, so yeah. you can just say next and I will switch this Yes. I am talking about the, the other topics in short, uh, shortly, and then we can, we can discuss in the Padlet together. I just mentioned the topic and which connect uh, can be happening in our class. About EM spectrum, EM spectrum stands for electromagnetic uh, spectrum. Uh, in synchrotron, we have a certain range of the EM spectrum. But in our class, uh, we uh, explain about the range of the EM waves and uh, about explain about their wavelengths and frequency. Next, it is a slide as uh, talked in the previous week. Andrew and Tracy talk about the range of the uh, EM spectrum in synchrotron. And then about the motion, uh, we are talking about, we talk about the motion in uh, mechanic. Uh, uh, when we are, when we talk about uh, mechanic, about the motion, we explain displacement, velocity, time, and acceleration. Uh, in synchrotron, uh, what about the motion of electron in synchrotron? The electrons are already traveling at 19.99019% the speed of light. We no longer use speed to describe the motion of electron. We are switching to energy. And next, about the energy, energy level, uh, as electrons circulate the 103 meter in booster ring in the CLS, they reach a total energy of 2,900 mil. Uh, how much is it? Is equivalent to the energy of about 2 billion AM batteries. Uh, in our class, we are talking about the energy level in grade 12, an electron in a hydrogen atom may jump from the ground state to a, a higher energy excited state. A students can determine the energy of the emitted radiation. Uh, it's uh, in order of electron volt, but there is energy is about uh, 2,900 mer. 
and next uh, about speed of light uh, we talk about the speed of light in uh, grade nine or ten on a different level uh, the booster ring cannot increase the speed of electron two or beyond the speed of light but the electron travel at about near the light speed of light is a good connection between the speed limited we talk about in our class. And next topic is about circular motion. Uh, as output dipole magnets spin the electron beam around the ring and keep it focused vertically. Quadrupole magnets provide horizontal frequency, focusing to the electron beam. And we um, talk about circular motion in mechanic and uh, student determine the force and other things. Next. Uh, next topic about centrifugal force. Uh, in uh, our class, we talk about the force can cause centrifugal force such as friction or tension and other things. Uh, in synchrotron, magnets play an essential role in controlling the electron beam throughout the facility. Here, a series of dipoles apply magnetic will to steer the beam like a driving car. Electrons will take the corner differently depending on their energy. And next topic is about energy conversion. Uh, about energy con uh, converting energies uh, to each other in our class in grade uh, 10. Uh, electron, electric energy convert to kinetic energy or thermal energy, magnetic energy convert to kinetic energy, and so on. Uh, in synchrotron, the electrons needed to be much faster and more energetic in order to produce the light needed for experiment. For experiments, sorry. Uh, Linux is the first step to getting them up to speed, as you show in the in your picture. Electrons receive energy from, from electric field. It means electric field give them energy. By the end of the linear, the electrons are traveling 99.9998% the speed of light. Next. About a uh, work function. Uh, Function, uh, we talk about work function. Uh, in grade 11, 12, in grade 12. Uh, and we can connect it about the uh, metal such as tungsten with our class. Uh, why is tungsten suitable in the electron gun? Using tungsten is the simplest and cheapest way to produce electrons. Of all pure metals, tungsten has the highest melting point and it has the relatively low work function. Work function definition is the minimum amount of energy needed to eject an electron from the surface of the metal. And next topic is about materials structure. Uh, we talk about this uh, topic in our uh, grade 10 and nine. Uh, we use uh, in synchrotron, uh, we use hard X-ray, short wavelength X-ray to study the structure of materials in fine details. Some materials such as uh, crystal, solids, 
liquids and nanostructure. Research from this beam line can be used in many areas, including physics, chemistry, engineering, and so on. Hmm. And next topic is okay. Uh, for uh, our listening, there are some references, and uh, you can share your idea in the Padlet and uh, give us your opinion and your comment and what you think about the how you we can connect the synchrotron in our class topics. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Han. It, it might be good if you could put those websites in the chat and people can access it easily. Yeah, sure. Also, uh, we are compiling a document which includes the sources or resources introduced during this presentation. We can also add them to. Oh, that. OK. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so I have shared the Padlet link. It is actually the same Padlet which we have used on the 19th January session. And uh, now there is another section which says, could you write your idea or and other connections about the concepts used in Synchrotron? Uh, so you can all go in there and write any different concepts or ideas which comes to your mind and especially teachers from the other disciplines because we have talked so too much about the physics concepts related with the synchrotron let me reshare the link here oops so if i understand up we want now only to write on the most right column right so sorry so should, should we now add and write in all of the columns with the topics or only on the most right, the new one that you put on the right? Uh, on the right, on the far right, so you'd see I, another I, new column. I'll, I'll share it so everybody can see. Yeah, it would be great. Okay. Um, okay, I, I don't know if I shared the right one. Can you see now the... Uh, I have accidentally shared okay. the wrong link, lastly. Oh, yes, this is the correct one, yeah. But am I sharing the right screen? Yeah, you are. Okay, so if you go all the way to the right on the Padlet, there is a new column here. <coughs> and what we would like, if let's take five, 10 minutes, and, and, and we'd like each of you to write um, ideas from, from your discipline uh, or thoughts or what would you would have liked to have um, or any thoughts. And then on the second part, we'll continue this as a basis for our discussion on the second part. So do we have now the right? Uh, um, yeah, we have the right link in the chat, right? Sorry? This is now the right link in the chat. Yes, it's yeah. the right link. I've clicked on it and I've added um, something to that final column. Okay, great. So, um, so we take what, um, five minutes or a bit longer? Uh, five minutes seems okay, I think. Yeah, so let's take Let's say five minutes, we'll be happy if you go to the link, go to the most right uh, column. So I hope everybody is back. Um, so, um, you want out to go through some of the things written or shall I? Uh, doesn't matter, you can go on, I think. Okay, share. 
So I'm, I'm sorry, I have two screens. So yes, am I sharing now the, the Padlet? Yes, you are. <laughs> so I'll just go uh, quickly from top to bottom and, and please anyone if you can um, want to add something, just um, open the mic and jump in. And uh, since I'm in a share screen mode, I'm not sure that I can see it. Yeah. Try to see. I have to open all the windows. Okay. So, um, where am I? Yes. <coughs> Sorry. I have a post COVID cough. Um, Okay, so we have the note from, from Tracy about the uh, research process. Uh, for example, asking good questions and designing a method to gather information to answer the, uh, the questions. Um, we have a note from Susan about green energy, the use of solar panels at Sesame, how solar panel works, reducing reliance on uh, fossil fuels, environmental impacts, climate change. Um, do you mean, Susan, that the fact that the facility, facility itself is running solely on, on solar power at this point? Yes, I thought that that would be a nice practical example that at least um, here in the US, we don't have a lot of things that are running solely on solar power. So to show how it can be used successfully would be, I think, a, a good example, and then spin off into why we should be using solar power. I think it's also uh, uh, interesting, I mean, till now I was thinking <coughs> always on two levels also when we were preparing this workshop that in synchrotron, for example, so we have the physics and the science of building the synchrotron, and then we have the physics and science done in the experiments using the synchrotron. But I think you're adding an important um, uh, important point about uh, science as a, as a social thing. So even if it's building university or how a university works, how a science facility works, um, and like you say, the, the consideration that building a science in facility, not relying on fossil fuels. <coughs> um, yeah, I think, um, thank you. I, I find it, I, I'm connecting it also to myself. I found myself several times talking with my students, just explaining what's, how is this line of work being a researcher, that it's, it's an occupation that you can go and do. And, um, um, yeah. So thank you. Um, <coughs> next note um, we have from from Leila Haki. Um, we could use the STEM methods by planning with other teachers. We designed some experiments, such as the laser for study molecules with chemistry teacher, and so on. Um, Leila, would you like to maybe elaborate? Um, I understand that you, um, you're referring like to do interdisciplinary within the school activities. Um, you're muted if, I don't know if you're trying to talk, but. Uh... You're still muted. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I think uh, the STEM methods are very useful. And uh, I always, in my classes, um, think about uh, new methods. Um, STEM methods is uh, very new for me. Uh, and uh, I always plan uh, with uh, each uh, other teachers. Um, uh, sometimes uh, I uh, I don't know how to explain 
it, uh, how explain it. Um, but uh, it is very new methods, uh, I think. Um, as I said, by planning with uh, other teachers, we uh, design uh, some experiments such um, use the laser or um, uh, in the synchrotron, synchrotron, <laughs> sorry, uh, we um, use uh, the light and uh, we uh, use the STEM methods uh, uh, um, with uh, biology teachers, chemistry teachers, uh, and so on. Uh, I uh, have two um, um, planning uh with bi biology uh, teachers and chemistry teachers uh, and uh, i use these methods and uh, i um, uh, think uh, it um, uh, um, um, I I don't know <laughs> explaining it. My uh, English speaking is very awful. I so sorry for about that. It is uh, first time I uh, speak uh, in in English. Uh, sorry, I think. <laughs> uh, you're, you're doing great. I, I could. Um, <laughs> Your English is great. I, you're doing fabulous. <laughs> I um, uh, couldn't speak fluently English, but uh, I uh, completely understand you. Uh, and uh, if you have a question, I'm here. Okay, th uh, thank you, Leila. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to say that when you were saying, I, uh, it reminded me also for when I, I, didn't, I didn't do much of this, Cross work with, I did some with uh, with uh, a chemic fellow chem chemistry teacher. It was very good, but I, I remember that first reaction of my students was, "Why am I mixing subjects now? We're in a physics class, so why am I bringing uh, chemistry?" Um, which is okay. I get more angry when they say the same about when I do math, and then they are angry with me that I do math in, in physics class. But that's a different story. Um, okay, um, <coughs> uh, next, uh, uh, the next note, that, that's from me. I just uh, discovered the, uh, the GIFs that I can add in Padlet, so I was playing with it. Um, but I was thinking, it, it came up several times during this week about um, uh, the issue of uh, special relativity, and I'm thinking even more now that... Um, I myself did it several times, but I think it's my thought is that it's important to mention it, that it's there, that it exists, even if I'm not going into it. Um, and <coughs> I do it, I do it when I teach magnetism, and I mention that it's it's actually a relativistic uh, uh, effect because um, it's not a fundamental uh, uh, force. And, um, but now in the synchrotron, it came several times. So we have the Doppler effect and, and, uh, and, and the relativistic, uh, uh, in the Wigglers, we, we saw it. So I think it's, it's an opportunity to, uh, um, yeah, I think it's, it's also a, a, as connection to the issue of, of misconceptions. So I think it's good even from young ages, they know there is special relativity, it's there. Um, next note we have from uh, Uslam, <coughs> writes in 11th and 12th grades, we can teach magnetic field, circular motion, electromagnetism, and x-rays. During that time, we can explain little information about synchrotrons, and we can plan extra lessons for students who are interested in this subject. This is a great idea. Thank you very much. And... <coughs> Um, yeah, the next note is also from me. You can see from the, uh, that I was adding pictures. Um, yeah, so it's again, it's a thought. Uh, I, 
it maybe connect with with what Leila said about the, the interdisciplinary connections. So I thought maybe in physics class, if I teach about the use of uh, magnetic fields and acceleration in synchrotron, then bring small problem as an example of how it's being used, for example, in spectroscopy, without diving into it as a, as a big subject. And last note from Carlos, um, we could explain magnetic forces and circular motions. And as an example, we could talk about where it's used, where we use these topics in synchrotrons, how we can deflect charged particles, how can we produce radiation in a circular motion. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's a good and clear idea. Thank you very much, Carlos. You're, wa you're welcome. Um, so um, what we wanted to share now, I think we do now the two videos and, uh, and then I think, so I want to share two videos as an example also of the um, demonstration that can be done in class, although they do take the need of certain equipment. And, and then we do the split into two um, discussion groups. <coughs> And um, so again, uh, let me just find the. Let me find the video. Itam Itamar, could I? Yes. Um, and there was a couple of there have, been, there, there have been a couple of questions or comments about uh, the relativistic part of things, and um, unfortunately, I have to leave for a meeting in about fifteen minutes. But could I just? make a few comments about that before you go on yes please, please okay let me just quickly do this let me share my can i share my screen um okay i have this can you see it may be not such a good i just quickly yes scribbled. we can see the yes okay so let's see screen. let me see if i can make it a little bit bigger um Okay, so it, there's there's a lot of talk about circular motion, um, um, relativistic um, properties. So let's imagine you have a charge that's going around a circle, right? What makes it go in a circle is that you have a magnetic field. So this this is a charge Q, uh, which is an electron, which is minus E, where E is the charge of on a on one uh, proton. So the electron is negative E. Um, the basic equation is that the force is equal to charge times the velocity crossed with the magnetic field. Um, but if you imagine in a synchrotron, the electron instantaneously is going in this direction, the magnetic field, um, you imagine that the magnetic field is uniform in the region of the, of the charge, it's pointing out of the page toward your face, right? So if I look at Q, uh, V, you know, how you put, you line your, your, your um, little finger in the direction of the, of the velocity, and if the magnetic field is toward your face, if you rotate it, then the force is straight out, right? The force will be pointing in that direction, but you have a negative charge here, uh, which means that the force is directed toward the center of the circle as the case for centripet for regular uniform circular motion, okay? Um, so if you look at this equation, what you have is EVB is equal to, mass time velocity is the momentum, right? So call it P. So you have P times V and the V's cancel. So you have EB is equal to P over R, which is what I've written here. And so in accelerated physics, we like to talk about the radius of curvature of this orbit. So one over R would be um, related to the magnetic field in this respect, right? I just moved the P on this side. Um, but this P is relativistic P. Okay, this is not just uh, the rest mass of an electron times its velocity, because we know relativistically that the total energy squared of the electron is equal to its rest energy squared, which is its rest mass times C squared, all squared. Um, but the thing is that the, the, the rest energy is only about one half of an MeV. Okay, and you're talking about these storage rings where the energy is in the GeV range. 
So when you, so you can neglect this part of the energy coming from the rest energy of the electron so that the, you have E squared is equal to P squared V squared or the energy of the electron is equal to its momentum times the speed of light, which is about three GeV for typical synchrotron light sources. So this is the equation. So the relativistic aspect is all embedded in this P. This is the relativistic uh, momentum, which is mass times, you know, the, the, it, it's equal to the, the, how do you want to say, E equal to MC squared. Um, that's the, how do I want to say this? This is E equal to MC squared, okay? This, but the, the mass is the relativistic mass, and that's equal to PC. So the, to make a long story short, this is the relativistic uh, momentum, which is rest mass times this gamma. I didn't complete this. Um, so the mass is, is, is rest mass times the gamma, which is the relativistic gamma, which is a big number, times the speed, but the speed is C, essentially the speed of light. Um, so I'll, I'll put that equation in there too. This momentum, the relativistic momentum, is, M, is the rest mass times the relativistic gamma, this Lorentz factor, um, times the speed, which is roughly C. So the, so the terms of the radius of this thing, it, it's related to the relativistic momentum like this. Does that make sense? Thank you, Mr. Um, Fezzi. Thank you. Okay. I understand. But, uh, if I may ask oh, again, no. so um, I, again, I, I think I already asked you, so the, the radius of these accelerators. Right. From what I understand, so in a synchrotron, the radius can be much smaller and you can fit it in a house if I compare uh, it to, to CERN. Well, they might have 300 meters roughly. And so the CERN is going to be many more meters. Um, the, the accelerator I worked at, the Fermilab, was four miles around. What's that, about three kilometers around or something like that? I can't remember. I mean, I'm saying in the opposite direction. So it's, it's more, it's several kilometers, maybe five kilometers around. So thousands of meters, whereas these things are hundreds of meters. So this is 300 meters around in the temp typical third generation uh, light source. 300 meters around and energy runs on the order of two and a half to three GeV. And if I compared it to energies in CERN, which is a much larger well, uh, yeah but CERN is proton accelerator so, so the question is know, it's because of the difference in the rest mass of protons versus electrons that I yeah well, the bigger radius yeah the, the, the electron the pro yeah the protons have much much higher mass but that's not so much the um um for for a synchrotron light source you just don't need that much you don't i mean it seems that 3, 3 GeV is sort of a sweet spot for these synchrotrons, two and a half to three GeV. And you can do mm -hmm. it in 300 meters. You don't need that. But if you need to, you don't, to, to okay. accelerate something up to much higher energies, because they're going to, in, you, know, you know, hundreds of GeV for these big, big things like CERN um, and Fermilab, which was at a TeV. So you need to have a much bigger radius for that. But, but, but you're saying that if, it's just, we don't need it, but it actually, if, if I want, I can also accelerate electrons to the 100 GeV. And yeah, then... you could do that, but it, the danger with that, though, the, 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 the synchrotron radiation just really kills you. I mean, the amount of um, energy it's going to throw off. Because see, people in particle accelerators don't want to, to lose energy to synchrotron radiation. That's a negative thing. So there's mm -hmm. no reason for particle accelerators to have an electron that's going to be going around, you know, a mile or, or, or you know, many miles, several miles around because the, the synchrotron radiation just, just, just wipes you out. So it's a negative thing for us in my field of high energy physics, but for synchrotron light sources, it's a great thing, but it's just that you don't need that much synchrotron radiation coming from a big electron accelerator. I mean, what you get here in 3 GeV is, 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 is more than what you, you need. So there's no need to go to that size machine. Hey, okay, great. thank you very much. Okay, I'm sorry, sorry that I cut into you, but I wanted to make these comments and um, um, before I had to take off. Okay, thank you.
Uh, you are mute, Itamar. We couldn't hear you. Yeah, that's my favorite mode in Zoom to be muted. Um, okay. So um, uh, this is a, a short film of, of two demonstrations, two uh, ideas of how to build a demonstration in class. This can be also a project uh, with students building this kind of demonstration. What we see was photographed, it was filmed in CERNs. Uh, they have uh, the educational lab, an educational center in CERN where, where they, um, develop and make workshops for, for uh, teachers and develop uh, also for students and develop these kind of activities. Um, so what we will see at the beginning here is an, uh, <coughs> a model of a linear accelerator to, to demonstrate the principle of a linear uh, accelerator. So we have a plastic tube, which have these uh, uh, rings of aluminum or copper sheets. And then it's, it's more like a game. So they have this ball, which is painted in a, let me take it back. The ball is painted in a, with a conductive uh, paint. Um, <coughs> sorry. And, um, and then um, they connect, a, 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 for example, one of the potentials from, from this, uh, um, uh, forgot the name of the, um, I remember it's a vendor something also, I think. <laughs> and uh, so it, it's like a game that you try to move the potentials in the right pace. And here you see the ball got stuck, but it, it's a way of, uh, of demonstrating in a game. It can be also a project. And here you can see it's another game demonstration again of accelerating this time in a circular motion. Again, it's it's done very simply of a of a, a glass ball it can be done also with a plastic ball, and then stripes of aluminium foil are being um, stretched and glued on the ball in a way that you have uh, different polarities each time. So you can see that. Um, one polarity is the big X, X here. And then from the top, you have foil to bring these polarities, these short stripes. And again, um, by connecting uh, the two uh, poles of the vol of high voltage to the, um, to the stripes, you can, we can get this kind of uh, um, acceleration. Well, it just keeps on going round and round. Um, so uh, these are two two ideas we thought also would be good to bring here as as ideas. I think they're relevant to, to accelerators in general and, and to us synchrotron, but also as ideas again as demonstration or, or projects we can do with our students. Um, the second um, the second video in a few minutes. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, uh, this video, uh, yeah, uh, that's an idea also of, of a demonstration I saw itself in some website or, or, or YouTube from other teachers. So I this I, I did it in, in my lab. Um, I do have uh, did have the privilege of having um, uh, a high voltage source. You can see this one goes up to uh, um, 25 kilovolts. Um, <coughs> But I haven't got it yet. If I can try it, also do with a mechanical uh, voltage um, um, generator, like we saw in the um, previous uh, video. Uh, the, anyway, the idea, what I thought of bringing it as an idea of, of 
um, again, um, showing the principle behind the electron gun or our ability that we can actually extract electrons and use them. So I, I have two aluminum plates. So I built, I, I put them as a, as a capacitor and connected each one to one of the polarities. I put a candle um, in the middle. And as I increase the voltage, so what we have in the candle is, is actually, you have, we have a lot of ions, it's sort of a plasma. So we have ionized uh, material, electrons and, and um, um, we have ionized atoms because of the heat in, in the candle flame. And, and because I put, we put them in a very uh, strong electric field, uh, they're getting pulled to their respective polarities and it can be shown by the, the, the shape of the flame that it's getting flat and being pulled um, to the two sides. Um, oops, sorry. Um, and one also can see that, let me stop it that, right. So it's, it's, and it's also interesting that it's not symmetrical. So we, we have more, which is reasonable, we have more mass or more part of a flame as positive ions being pulled to the negative, um, to the negative plate than, than we see uh, part of the flame being pulled to the positive. Right. So this concludes the uh, sharing of uh, uh, what we got in the third first part. And um, and right. And, and now what we want to do is time is six. Um, <coughs> I think we were thinking about taking it to about uh, um, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, um, Susan is asking plans for demonstra which demonstrations, the one from CERN? Yeah, I actually, before, before the session, I went to the website. Uh, I didn't see plans for these two. They have on the website, uh, um, I'll share it. It's, they call the Center uh, School Lab. Um, they have their um, um, descriptions for demonstration. They also have uh, uh, prepared plans for 3D models. They have some. So they have a list of demonstration. Also, you can print with 3D printers. And they have already, I think, the files for the printers there you can download. Um, for these two ones I showed you in the video, I didn't find the plans. So either I didn't look enough or it's, it's not there. But um, uh, we can share later the link for the video itself because it's, you can it's pretty easy to see how, how it's done. Um, right. <clears throat> so um, we would like to split into two groups. And, uh, um, and I, I think we'll talk in the groups, but I think, as I said, um, it's about continuing what we started now and also in the previous last week's uh, session, um, thinking of, of ideas, needs. Um, again, even if it's ideas that we don't know how to do, but we would like to have it as teachers, everything is can be on, put on the table. Okay. Uh, Itamar. Yes. Uh, before we start the, uh, the group session, I think Mirwat wants to talk about misconceptions. Do we have a time, Mirwat? Uh, I think, Nasi, um, what we decided was that we can just have a discussion on the misconceptions in the groups. But I would like to appreciate here all the teachers and the bringing the ideas they have put together of connecting Synchrotron to their classroom connections. Thank you. And, I was just wondering that because the relativity um, um, topic has been, you know, pointed out, as I can recall from our first meeting, one of the teachers uh, from our participants have asked Andrea after his presentation that um, um, 
the relativity connections to the synchrotron. And today, one of the teacher also put it on Padlet. So um, just, I was just wondering that maybe up to the level, <coughs> excuse me, up to the level of the student's understanding, we can maybe um, start introducing relativity um, with, our, with the speed of electrons, because uh, we uh, sped up the electron rather, uh, approximately to the speed of the light. And at such speed, the relativistic effects already comes in play. And uh, if I'm not wrong, maybe someone can correct me if I'm wrong, that um, uh, at lower speeds, uh, electrons you know, cannot just um, uh, focus into a beam as a bunch, rather they spread out. So um, such speeds, relativistic speeds, are important maybe to uh, keep the beams uh, uh, to be focused in bunches. So that could be our starting point to introduce relativity in synchrotrons to our classrooms. And excuse me, sorry for my bad throat. <clears throat> and um, um, I guess one important uh, uh, thing that we are missing connecting synchrotron to our curriculum connection is uh, the energy conservation. So uh, if uh, we have some ideas related to the energy conservation, that would be too good. Because um, I guess um, what I was thinking that uh, when the electrons uh, emit radiations, they lost their energy. And if they lose their energy, then uh, they are no longer focused in the form of a bunches and they might spread out. And to keep the electrons <clears throat> into the focus beam, uh, we have the radio frequency radiation. So we can just have, yes, radio frequency radiations. So we can just uh, radio ca frequency cavities or those radiations help them, uh, 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 help the electrons to keep them in focus or as a bunches. So uh, this could be the starting point for the relativity or maybe for the energy conservation. And if some other teachers have some other good points or maybe uh, they want to add into these two topics, it would be appreciated. <laughs> We can, Amasi, probably um, talk about the misconceptions of the students in our group discussions. Thank you. Okay, that's okay. Yes. If you want. Um, okay, so uh, let me give me a second. I'll, I'll create the two rooms now. Um, and um, 